66.5. We don't set alarms around here and that's what time we woke up. 66.5 is half a kilo less than yesterday. Uh, so the coach had me lower the calories and up the cardio. And yesterday was the first day of the new lowered calories and upped cardio. That's the result. Fuck. There is very little of me right now. I'll give you a quick little look at how we're looking. As you can see, body fat has basically disappeared, doesn't exist anymore, it has left the chat. However, we still have about five more kilos to lose, which is, that, that to me is mind blowing. The fact that I'm this lean and I still have to get around five kilos less is crazy. Uh, but yeah, that's just the extent of what you have to go through on prep. And when I say prep, I mean competition prep. If you know, you know. Okay, how good does this look? If it focuses properly. Look at that. <laughs> Mouth watering. I've had French toast for a long time now. And I'm still not over it. This stuff is the best. Now, last time you saw me probably having oats. Oats got way too not filling enough for me. So I decided to move over to French toast, which is something that I've had since I've started the fitness journey. Just from watching Greg Doucet and Jesse James West have their French toast. I've always loved it, so I've decided to go back to it. And usually I just put on maple syrup and just drizzle a crap ton of that on it. However, there is a new thing which I've found, and that's to add peanut butter to it. Now, obviously powdered peanut butter, so it's not crazy calorie dense and whatever. However, the look, it may sound disgusting, and don't knock it till you try it. The powdered peanut butter and the maple syrup, vanilla maple syrup if you can get some, Beautiful. Now that might just be something which, since I'm on contest prep, everything tastes absolutely amazing. Everything that tastes like a two beforehand now tastes like a 10, like black coffee. I used to hate black coffee. I, I love coffee. However, I can only drink milk coffee. Uh, but yeah, being on prep, I love black coffee now. It's, it, it's all the weird things. The weird, like almond milk. I used to hate almond milk. Now I love it. The taste of the nuts while drinking a milk is delicious. Uh, it's a really, really weird thing. Um, however, it is a thing. So this to me right now is absolutely heaven. And I start all my mornings off like this. Oh yeah, and while we're here in this good light, what do we think of the beard? Now I'm not shaving this beard until the show day. Like when we have to fully shave and get ready, that's when I'm shaving this thing. I have never grown it out very long at all. Now, do I think it looks good? Not really. Uh, it still has that very neck beard looking thing. Um, I like the mustache, that's a lot better. Um, that's slowly growing out. However, it doesn't come up here, which really sucks. I really want it just to come and have a solid beard up here. Like it's pretty thin. Thick. Like it's not that bad as far as the teenage bum fluff goes. It just doesn't shape properly, which really sucks But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just why not? I'm growing it out. Uh, no real reason. I just Feel like it. Um, but yeah, l let me know what you think down in the comments Is it something which I do in the off season? Do I grow it out fully when I'm bulking? 
Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Bro, why are you sneaking around? So, you may be taller, you may be stronger, you may be smarter, you may be faster than me. Um, however, do you have a coffee mug with your name on it? I don't think so. Respect. That's really hot, fuck. Being four and a half, five-ish weeks out from contest, I'm always tired. It's a very dramatic trend, and I just want to discuss a few things. But first, there's something which is going to really help with that, luckily. So, after around 10 o'clock, I usually like to chill out completely, stop walking, stop getting my steps up, because I would have it all then. Uh, don't eat, just relax, play some Minecraft, do whatever I can do to uh, calm my mind. Um, and at that point, all I want to do is slip on some nice trousers, slip on a jump up, put on my beanie, and just chill out, because it usually also gets pretty cold. It's starting to become winter. So this, oh, I won't show the shipping address, this is probably the best and most exciting news that I have gotten all month. And you'll see why in a second. So we'll give it a good open up with our muscles. Not that there's many of them left at this point. And we'll pull it out. We've got some stuff. So obviously, thanks to all of you for following me and supporting me and using my code, I am able to work with some really amazing brands. And this isn't just some brands. Slouch Potato. Made in Melbourne, here where I live by Zach Perna, someone who I look up to and I've looked up to for a very long time. I am now working with his brand. This is proper premium loungewear. It's not just some cheap shit that's off China or whatever and then put some logos and stuff like that. This is proper quality and even the bag, the boxes that they come in, everything is so, so nice. So, what have we got here? We've firstly got their brand new Panda Bamboo shorts. These things are so nice. They don't feel restrictive, which is exactly what you want when you want to be sitting down and playing Minecraft for a few hours. The Pandas are their newest addition to their line. So here we have a very large fluffy shirt with a panda eating Pizza. That makes me jealous. I wish I was that p panda right now. How badly I could go for a pizza and be as lazy as this guy. That's going on, of course. Oversized as well. I don't really like wearing tight clothes. I don't know about you guys. Tight clothes and Blake just don't go well together. Now this is a brand new tank top that they've released. And again, very baggy, exactly how I like it. Very thin, slouch potato with a hot dog spray painting the logo. How cool is that? So it's the exact same material. Like it's that very thin, comfort, lounge, relaxing material, but in a tank. So of course, when you're chilling and watching the TV, watching YouTube, watching this, you're going to be showing off the gains in comfort. And finally, the one that I'm actually most excited for, because I need more of these. I need more pants. Exactly what I need right now, purple. That is such a nice color. Yeah, when I'm at home, this is exactly what I want to be wearing. You have to buy some and feel the material for yourself to know exactly what I mean. It is extremely thin, but strong. They just feel breathable. It's the best way to, best way to describe it. So yeah, I am over the moon with these. Oh, and they've got the even buns and wieners on the bottom. That's really cool. So yeah, pandas and hot dogs being lazy. That is the best. Again, the hot dogs are kind of making me a bit hungry right now. Uh, I would love to wear these right now, but I'm going to the gym, so I can't be wearing these. These are for a lot later in the night. Z Zach and Joel always deliver with Slouch Potato, and that is why I'm so, so happy and glad to be working with these guys. This is a dream come true. I've been looking to do this ever since I've started this channel. So massive, massive, massive thanks to both Zach, Joel, and the whole team down at Slash Potato for getting in touch with me to work with their brand. Getting yourself the luxury experience while you're at it, made in Australia, is the best thing you can possibly do. And I promise you, it will be the comfiest stuff you have ever worn. I can guarantee you that. So again, I wanna thank you all for the support. I wanna thank Slash Potato and make sure to use code Blake to cop yourself 
some new slash potato luxury loungewear. Now, I'm not doing a full day of eating or anything that's gonna come later in the week, but however, this is what we're looking at for our lunch. Now, last time I did a full day of eating, it was like maybe eight weeks out, whatever it was. This is lunch of five and a half weeks out. Look at this, how lovely does that look? It's just cauliflower rice, you got some spinach underneath, some mixed vegetables and potatoes, and then we've got some mint and water. Plenty of water. 1,600 calories does not look and taste amazing. However, it does have a quarter teaspoon of salt in it. So I enjoy every grain of salt that I possibly can. Yes, Blake, delicious. Okay, let's talk about it. The reason you may even clicked on this video is because of the title. I'm really not enjoying gym at the moment. Now, why is that? As I start to get ridiculously lean to the point where my body fat is getting very close to stage lean and stage ready, sub 5%, there is no more energy left in my body. Now functioning day to day and talking isn't that bad, I'm kind of doing well in that aspect. However, doing cardio so often, going to the gym, that part sucks. My body is always aching. Anything that I do in the gym just feels so weak, so tiring. It feels like I'm a beginner again. I don't know many of you how far into your journey you are, but being a beginner sucked because your energy levels are down here, you have fatigue down here, you're not strong at all. All of my lifts are going right down to the bottom. It's not fun. And I, as someone who really enjoys going to the gym, really enjoys lifting and loves it, you know, it's obviously what I'm trying to do with my life kind of depressing the fact that I have to go to the gym with two scoops of heavy pre-workouts, blast my ass off with music just to hype myself up, and then when I get there just to do cardio, and then be tired by the time I have to start my workout, and then when I start my workout, it's not fun, it's awful, it's... yeah, it, it's... it's hard, basically, and... It's just the fact of how it is at the moment. And it's also why I haven't been making as many YouTube videos as of lately. And it's not because I don't want to edit or anything like that, which is usually the problem. It's the fact that I don't want to record me going to the gym. Now I'm happy to record eating and throughout my day and whatever, this is all fine. But as soon as I head to the gym, I don't want to pull out the camera. I don't want to set up a tripod every single time that I have to work out. You know, it's, it's just not as fun as it used to be. And obviously I know that that's definitely going to change as soon as I get some food into my system, but just currently that's how I'm feeling with the gym. It's never fun, um, which is why I'm really trying to start working out with other people or at least getting people to film me in the gym. because so I feel like if they're filming, I'll have a lot more enthusiasm to work out, I guess. Whereas I have to really, really motivate myself and discipline myself to even pull out the camera at the gym sometimes. So yeah, it's a working struggle and a working battle. However, we are getting there. And this will be the first time that I'll be w filming a full workout in quite a while. Uh, it's not going to be the best and most flashiest workout you've ever seen. Um, however, I'm hoping next video I'll be filming with Callum and Callum will be filming that workout, and that is a chest day, so that should be a lot more thrilling and a lot more exciting, especially with how ripped I am. I do look like a fucking superhero in the gym, so I do look crazy. It's just I'm always tired and I don't have any strength whatsoever, fatigue really quickly, need heaps of rest, need heaps of water. Toilet is every 10, 15 minutes, so it has its ups and downs, but that's just how I'm feeling lately. And for anyone who does go into bodybuilding competition, just be ready for how shit the workouts get. If you've ever been on a cut and you've ever been lean, you would know how much working out sucks when you're weak. However, getting down to stage lean is even worse. And that's coming from someone who's been relatively lean, sub 10% body fat, now getting down to sub 5% body fat. There is a major difference. So yeah, I'm going to try my best in the gym as much as I can. I'm gonna smash down some pre-workout in the car. 
or now or whenever. We've just had our lunch, so we have a little bit of fuel in our system. We're hitting hamstrings, glutes, and calves, which is the least favorite day out of all of my workouts, which is also why you don't see me train much of that on this channel, because I also hate filming it. So I'm just gonna try and make it as fun as possible. I might even do some commentary over this video. We'll see, we'll see how the editing process goes. But yeah, just thought I'd give a little bit of an update on my working out, because that hasn't been the best as of lately. But yeah, I, time to head off. So the gym fit that we're going with today is going to be this Erupt Oversize shirt from Gym Roos. The Erupt Oversize shirts are my favorite, especially in this blue. But then of course we have these brand new mesh shorts from Gym Roos. These have recently been released and they are the best leg day shorts, which, you know, hence today, today's leg day. So we're gonna be rocking these. And then we also have what once used to be white canvas vans. Now these are also my leg day shoes. Once was white, they are now more of a cream. They are so fucking dirty. And yes, I have washed them before and they just don't come out very nice. If you remember quite a while ago on my TikTok and all of that, I put up a video where I was going to draw names on my shoes. That's these shoes. The names didn't work out very well because the texture that I used just got smudged as soon as they got a little bit wet from the rain. So I basically discontinued that idea. However, I like the cream now. I like wearing creams and browns. Close enough, so it's more of an off-white. I'm gonna chuck on these, and yeah, again, these are the leg day shoes because they're really good for calf raises. Um, however, I think we look pretty fucking swag, as always, thanks to Jim Roos. Make sure to check him out and use code BLAKE at checkout. So, not gonna lie, I procrastinated the hell out of doing this voiceover for this workout. However, we are finally here, no excuses. So this is a hamstring, glutes, and calves day. Now, I split my, uh, my legs up into hamstrings and quads. Not that I do it, my coach doesn't, my coach tells me to. And then I go and do it. Uh, so yeah, today we're targeting more hamstrings, and these are the RDLs, and I absolutely love doing RDLs. I usually start with hamstring curls, however, uh, we're starting with RDLs because hamstring curls were taken at the time. Um, now with these, you don't want to keep your legs too stiff, you want them slightly bent and go quite low down. I'm also very weak at the moment, so very light weight and higher intensity. Now, I also wanted to show you these from behind because at the moment, being, what, five weeks out at, as of recording this, I am frigging shredded. Look at the deep cuts in these legs. That is crazy. Now, I actually have quite high fat percentage held in my legs. Like, I hold a lot of my fat in my legs. So, for my legs to look this shredded is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Um, that's just how lean I'm getting. Uh, but, yeah, they're RDLs. I'll put the weights back like a good boy. Also, I'm winging all this, by the way. Um, okay, so we have here hip thrusts. Now, whenever I'm doing my sets now, I usually chuck on whatever weight I did previously and then try and reach that. Usually, I can't. I'm getting that weak now that I can't do the previous weight that I did. So here is 120 kilo hip thrusts. And I need to do it for 15, because this is a light day. And we don't. I'm not going to count them all out. However, I did not get 15 out, which is pretty unfortunate. But that's just the reality of me losing so much strength at the moment. So 120 kilos for 13 reps, I'm pretty sure I got. Um, which just means that for the next set, that I'll just drop the weight and make sure that I get 15. And as you can see, the intensity was quite intense. Yeah, I'm not very happy with it. <laughs> Um, the intensity is quite intense, however, I can obviously go a lot more intense. Um, but that's just how tired I am at the moment. Also, two 5 kilos, because there was no 10 kilos around. It's okay, same weight. Um, really weird angle here from the front, with the pole in the way, however, it'll do. Uh, 120 kilos here. No, I'm not. It's 100. 100 kilos. 100 kilos, and I actually managed to get it for 15. Uh, which is a lot better, and that one was a lot more high intensity because I started to feel it. And just look at the separation in the side of the hams, the glutes are starting to pop out, calves are striated, yep, it feels really good. Now this is a really weird hamstring curl machine. I did not like this whatsoever. Look where the knee placement is. As you can tell by my face, I did not like this. 
Um, but I gave it a go because I wanted to see if it would work. And yeah, no, I just wasn't vibing with it. Um, I don't know what Techno Gym was thinking here. It is not a good machine. So I tried and gave up pretty quickly before moving on to a more trusted hamstring curl machine. This is what I usually do. And yeah, like I was saying before, I usually hold a lot more fat in my legs. So the fact that you can see veins in my calves and my tibialis like this is absolutely nuts. My legs are getting shredded, which I absolutely love. I love having shredded legs because my legs are quite big. They are very dominant on me. So when they're shredded, they look nuts. However, when I start to get a little bit more fluffy, my legs get very fluffy. And then they just look out of whack. See, I'm very glad to see that my legs are this lean. And I like being this lean. I don't like being this tired. There is a massive difference. Uh, there's hamstring curls. Oh, we're still going. Um... Yeah, even you can see the glute activation here. But even with hamstring curls, just a quick little tip. Make sure to squeeze all the way at the very bottom. And you don't have to fully extend. I don't like fully extending. I don't know, it fucks with my knees. So yeah, just go as far as you kind of can until you can feel the stretch. Now these are my worst. I hate these. These are hyper extensions. Now a lot of people think um, these are for your lower back or at least feel it more in your lower back. Um, so I've made a TikTok on this already, but just a quick little rundown. Uh, the best thing to do is when you go down, pull your lats back and try and stick your bum out. So as you go down, try and get your bum as high as possible. Um, and give it a good stretch. Lock out your knees completely, almost tense your quads. Um, and then at the top, don't go all the way up. You only want to go till your legs are parallel, like your body's parallel with it. So you're kind of standing up, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, you kind of just watch me and copy this if you're a visual learner. Uh, but yeah, this should be for your hamstrings and glutes. Also at the top of the exercise, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your hams. And yeah, obviously light days are very high intensity compared to usual. Um, now we have some seated calf raises. Uh, only one plate wasn't really feeling it. I think 20 reps, three sets. And my calves are quite a dominant area on me, as most of you know, my calves, I'm genetically blessed with calves. So I don't really take these crazily serious at the moment, especially since I am in a deficit. It's more just making sure they're still there. Even the hams are popping right now. Damn, look at the, look how crazy lean my calves are. That's nuts. Uh, but yeah, I just do my 20 reps. Oh, sorry. Uh, just do 20 reps and then one minute rest, 20 reps, and then do three sets of that. And I do that with all of them except for standing calf raises, which I have four sets of. Uh, oh yeah, today was rough, by the way. Um, so yeah, now we have leg press calf raises or calf extension. Yeah, calf press. Yeah, leg press, calf press. Sounds perfect. That's what we want to call it. Um, now, for the seated... It's more targeted for the shortened position and for length and uh, for the length and position, it's more for the leg press. So you wanna definitely get a good stretch going all the way down and then obviously just push up. It's also a lot about ankle mobility. Uh, there's one thing that I found, my ankle mobility is really high compared to a lot of other people's. And I find that anyone who has small calves usually has really bad ankle mobility. Uh, now, obviously this isn't the greatest range of motion at the moment. However, it is 20 reps and my calves are already really big, so I'm not too stressed about it. Uh, then these are standing calf raises. I did four sets of these. Again, 20 reps, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, just one minute rest in between. Now, I also always time my rests because I don't like sitting on my phone and then getting distracted and going, oh, whoops, that was a seven, eight minute rest time. Now, you know, my muscles aren't warm and shit like that so I make sure to always time my rests I go anywhere from like one minute on like a you know high intensity low weight day all the way up to around five minutes on a very low intensity heavyweight day uh, but yeah that's that's all the calf raises I think yeah after this I have one more exercise but that's the only exercises that I do for calves for most people who ask because many people want big calves like me trust me you don't you do, but it just means that you have to get your quads to catch up, which this is where this comes in handy. These are adductors. Someone one time asked me, what does what does adductors actually train? And I told him, adductors, because they're a muscle. It's your sartorius, and it's one of your quadriceps. 
Um, now, why am I training a part of the quadriceps in hamstring days? It's just kind of how my coach has me do it. I then also have abductors, which is the opposite on my quad days. So, you know, it's just a little bit of a variation at the very end of my um, training sessions, which is quite a common thing for him to do. Uh, however, I quite like it. So, yeah, that's everything. Let me know how you liked this voiceover compared to, like, the uh, music that I usually have over it. Um, don't worry, that won't be going away. Next video, I'll have the loud bashing music. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, well, thank God that is over. Fucking one hour's worth of cardio. And I also just got to the gym. Shut up, sirens. Also just got to the gym before peak hour which is quite good. I don't really like training and filming with a lot of people, especially on leg day. I just don't feel like it. Almost forgot where I parked for a second. All I can say is pre-workout is an immaculate thing. I'm telling you that right now. I'm usually quite cautious on how much caffeine I have throughout the day. I usually try and only have like 450 to 500 milligrams maximum. However, during this contest prep, I have been blasting caffeine more than you'd believe, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you know, two scoops of pre-workout, plus three coffees throughout the day, plus maybe even some more pre-workout, depends. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, but yeah, at the start of the session, we're really feeling it, we're feeling good, and towards the end, I just didn't feel like it. Um, However, we tried something new as well with the voiceover throughout the workout. Now, let me know what you think about that, because it was pretty easy for me to make. And I did actually enjoy making it a lot more than having to worry about the editing while I was working out and filming. It was simply just film the workout and then think about what I was going to say over the top while I was working out, which is a lot better. So yeah, give me your feedback on that. Don't worry, the nice, cool gym edits will stay. However, as I have a lot less energy and no filmer, I feel like that's probably the way to go. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to keep up with the series and like if you enjoyed this video. Big, big news coming very, very soon. You'll all know about that next week or in a few days, whenever that is. However, I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you all next time.